we've evaluated the risk assessment of hyperglycemia in patients receiving immunotherapy in non-small cell lung cancer. And to just give you a bit of a quick background about this, um, immune checkpoint inhibitors are associated with a wide spectrum of immune-related adverse events. And to manage these adverse events, you need to give high doses and prolonged courses of steroids and the incidence of steroids use as a result of immunotherapy toxicity in literature ranges from 24 to 35%. Now the issue here is, as we all know, um, immune checkpoint inhibitors are associated with um, diabetes through a mechanism by autoimmune destruction of beta cells. Steroids also are associated with diabetes in patients with pre-existing diabetes and in those that are susceptible to diabetes. So, the question for us, in light of an incident where we had a patient that developed diabetes as a result of immunotherapy toxicity, was um, are we monitoring patients and undertaking risk assessment as per national and local guidelines? So one of the guidelines that we've used is the Joint British Diabetes Society's guidelines. And these advise that a risk assessment should be carried out in order to identify patients at high risk with the aim to provide early and timely intervention. The intervention could be referring the patient to the, to the inter endocrinologist or um, advising the patient on a dietary support or adjusting or initiating oral hypoglycemic agents or simply you know, referring or letting the regular diabetes team of that patient know about it. So we looked at high risk patients. The other questions that came about from this was our patients in lung cancer and in other types of cancers as well, they are already at a very high risk um, of multiple comorbidities, of treatment toxicities. They often present at an old age, particularly in lung cancer. So should we just consider everyone as high risk and manage them accordingly? Or should we um, undertake a risk assessment? Is it, are we going to waste our times by undertaking a risk assessment when we should just monitor them and you know, manage them in the way they should be managed? So this was the sub-question of our, of our um, analysis. So we've compared patients that had received steroids as a result of immunotherapy toxicity to um, a criterion standards that we've derived from our local guidelines and from the national guidelines. And we found that we're not adhering to guidelines. So it, and, and, and some of the major findings was that um, it is very hard to grade patients' um, toxicity and level of clinical significance of hyperglycemia without considering the overall picture. So we found some of our learnings. So um, um, some of our some of our le learnings was um, awareness of guidelines in a, in a time where lung cancer and uh, other tumor types are experiencing a huge amount of increase in the complexity of management and treatment algorithms. So we need to take a step back, think about the overall management of, of, of the patient, and think about how to minimize any toxicities from our treatment choices. Very, very important. A very important role for pharmacists as well, to educate the rest of the pharmacy team and to educate medical healthcare professionals about the existence of these guidelines and the importance of monitoring patients. Second thing was um, a simple intervention by providing a dietary leaflet advice to patients and having this in hand in clinic so that you can give it to patients straight away is also very very important. We've developed a local diabetes risk assessment tool using risk assessment criteria from local and national guidelines again and we will hopefully answer our initial question of should we risk assess or not um, in 12 months time when we reevaluate and we use we, when we use that form. One of our significant findings it was that retrospectively we found that 92 percent, um, that is 92 percent out of 36 patients from a total sample size of 125, so 92 percent of 36, they were considered at high risk having undertaken the risk assessment retrospectively. So again this is very interesting and we should be managing these patients very importantly. Our audit and our project highlighted the importance of managing um, the supportive care area in, in immunotherapy and we hope that it has changed our practice and will change others as well.